Have you ever done a bicycle tour and camped out freely in nature? Well, if you did, you may have found that in most countries it's actually pretty difficult. But in Tajikistan, it definitely isn't. It's what we'll be getting into in this episode of Cycling Central Asia, and we'll start it off from the Welcome Inn in Khorok. Welcome to Central Asia, and the two countries we cycled through in the summer of 2018. Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan, both filled with inherent beauty, culture and some of the most fascinating places we've ever been to. This is Cycling Central Asia. Welcome to the Welcome Inn, the guest house we recommend dearly for when you're coming through Korok. The sisters who own the place are real friendly. If you stop by, feel free to send our greetings. Where are we, B? Well, I don't know the name of the place. Choi, Choi now? Choi. We're in a restaurant in Korog. Korog is the start or end of the epic Pamir Highway stretch that so many set out to cycle every year. Unlike other Tadik towns, it has restaurants, quite a few shops, and of course, a local market. If you're coming through town with an empty stomach, we recommend the Indian restaurant called Delhi Darbar. Time in Korok replenished us and prepped us for the warm ride ahead. Temperatures were hitting 45 degrees nearly every day, making this mostly downhill ride a real challenge. However, when cycling along the Panj in the direction of Dushanbe, you'll most likely have a headwind, which works quite refreshing. Almost as refreshing as fresh watermelon. Can you tell us what we just found? We just found, oh, for camping, we found an awesome camping spot. And this country is awesome because you can put your tent wherever you want. No problem. You say, you say, palatka. And they say, da, da, da. So you put your palatka wherever you want. Like B mentioned, camping is a huge pleasure when cycling through Tajikistan. When done sensibly and with respect to the locals, it's the single best way to interact with the country's environment. People are curious, come to ask questions or offer food and water, sleeping in their house instead of your tent, anything to make you feel like an appreciated guest. From what we experienced, I like Kyrgyzstan, this country has a culture of generosity that challenges anything we're familiar with back home. We're having shir choy this morning. It's a um, Tajik typical drink. It's black tea, milk, and you put a piece of butter inside and dip in the bread. <laughs> and how did we get here? On by bike. <laughs> no, no we, we met Ruslan. Ruslan, uh, you meet him very soon, but we met him yesterday on the road and then he insisted that we had to uh, have typical chai in his house. At 6.30 in the morning? At 6.30 in the morning, yes. This is the table here. He and his family prepared lovely candy and cookies. And the most amazing bread. Here he comes now. <laughs> Ruslan. We 
just um, we thought we, we'd stop by the road before it gets too hot because the sun has come out now. It's already too hot. And uh, talk to you a little bit about how we feel so far uh, about Tajikistan because what happened this morning with Ruslan, the guy who yesterday drove by me in his car uh, while being on some some very bad dirt road. Uh, as we were going next to each other, we had a small conversation which consisted of uh, Aikuda, which means where are you from? Uh, Galandia. Ah, Arjan Robben, which is one of our famous football players. Uh, you come to me, drink tea. Okay, sure. <laughs> so, this morning, or actually last evening, he came to us, he gave us fruit and water and everything, and he said, if there's any problem, call me, he gave me his number. And so this morning we went to his family house, uh, met his mother and his grandparents and his uncle. And At 6.30 in the morning. 6.30 in the morning, we had tea and bread and chocolate and cookies. And watermelon. Wow. So... Really, this doesn't happen anywhere else. Yeah, I think once we're back in Europe, we're gonna make a lot of comparisons and I think most of them are gonna be bad, to be honest, because uh, I don't think we're used to this kind of hospitality in Europe. Uh, this kind of um, curiosity and just innocent, um, how do you say, behavior of wanting to help, really wanting to help and not wanting anything in return. Uh, that's something that's quite rare uh, mm. back home. So yeah, we like Tajikistan. It's a good place. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, this this um, area is very special. Uh, we are cycling along the Afghan border, which is uh, just a, a river. That's the border here. So um, it's um, I don't know. It's an interesting cultural experience, I guess. You have yeah. anything to say? <laughs> well, yesterday night we saw five um, military guys. Patro patrolling, yeah, patrolling, yeah. patrolling the, the road so they just keep an eye on the Afghan border to make sure that nothing happens especially regarding drug dealing yeah there's some heroin stuff going on yeah it's not really because it's dangerous it's just uh, you don't want to be in the wrong place at the wrong time yeah so yeah there is actually a military guy walking along the road. I think we're gonna go now. <laughs> you put your sunscreen on? Yes. Yes? Ready to go? Ready to face the day? Yes, it's getting warm. <laughs> and so, by the river that splits a supposedly war-torn country from the one we were cycling in, it was that we realized how much the media has an effect on us when it comes to judging other countries. While it is true that soldiers were patrolling, we highly doubt it people on the other side are less friendly than the one on ours. So we stopped next to the road now for a little rest in the shadow and uh, there's apricot trees in this garden and the people here are offering us bags full so it's a little bit too much but they're so tasty. So good. Look. I hope we meet more cyclists and we can give them some. I wish I had a Welcome to our camp spot for the night. 
It's looking good. What's it doing, B? I'm cutting the potato. What are we gonna eat for dinner? Mm, we're gonna have some potatoes and onions, some pasta, and dini The special ingredient. One of the first yeah, meals we brought with us. And today is veggie meatballs with pasta. These, uh, finding these kind of camp spots is always a little bit tricky because they're off the road. In this case we had to follow a little gravel path. Um, but what helps is an app called Maps.me. We use this, we, first we were really pro Google Maps, but out here in Central Asia Google Maps is kind of shitty. So Maps.me works fantastic for finding camp spots and guest houses, restaurants, shops, those kind of things. You can see all the individual houses. I think they get their data from OpenStreetMap. Um, and some people map these kind of camp spots. They put sometimes if there's a stream or if there's a lot of mosquitoes or something like this. So it's quite helpful uh, once, once you're out here. A shooting star Weaving its way across the sea Somewhere from us And down the street we would have run To scratch our names in the back And yarn and free and in the sun Wheels of bone, wheels of bone Another week of eye-opening, sometimes literally breathtaking experiences behind us. And lessons learned, we'll be thinking a lot different about how the world works. Get out of your house, visit some place you've never been, and let it widen your senses. Trust me, it'll work wonders.